The few cues are back, bringing with them many questions to Lagosians. We seek to understand what's going on this morning on The Breakfast. And the Independent National Electoral Commission may not be ending the voter registration exercise on the 30th of June 2022. We'll look at the interim court order and its implications. Plus, we have analysis of the headlines in today's national dailies. A very good morning to you. We're back with a breakfast on Plus TV Africa. A very bumper package of discussions and analysis on the program this morning. My name is Kofi Barte. As we start off with a, a trending segment where we get to look at uh, what's being talked about by Nigerians on issues within the country and around the world. Once again, you're welcome. Well, it's been quite interesting uh, looking at the comments and um, uh, the criticism or the analysis, rather, of uh, the move by former member, now former member of the People's Democratic Party, a former minister of the Niger Delta, a chief, Gotzi Orubebe, um, who has recently resigned his membership of the People's Democratic Party. I mean, if you remember, from the 2015 general elections, there was a mild as some would say not so mild drama um, at the INA Coalition Center National a Coalition Center right there in Abuja, uh, when uh, Godse Urubebe, who was a minister in the government of the then president, uh, Good Dog Jonathan, refused uh, to leave the stage. He actually literally sat on the floor uh, when it was clear that the results were going the way of uh, the All Progressives Congress. or well, the man who, you know, staked his reputation and put his face out there in front of the entire world to save the People's Democratic Party has uh, resigned his membership of the People's Democratic Party. Uh, Godse Arubebe, former minister of the Niger Delta, made this known in the letter addressed to the national chairman of the party, Iocha Ayu, yesterday, Monday. Uh, in a copy of his resignation letter that Plus TV Africa has cited, uh, the former minister expressed his dismay over the emergence of a northerner uh, Atiku Abubakar as the party's presidential candidate. Now, part of the letter uh, reads, and I quote, I write to formally inform you of my resignation from the People's Democratic Party. It says this, I have communicated to the chairman of Burutu Ward, Ward 3 in Burutu local government area of Delta State, effective 20th June 2022. Says, consequently, I am by this letter in intimating you of my total withdrawal from all activities at the ward, local, state, and national levels of the People's Democratic Party. He went on to say in the letter, I'm highly honored and privileged to have been part of a political party that successfully transformed the Para, a para Nation to one that commanded respect in the Committee of Nations. Uh, it says, when we lost the presidential election in 2015, I'm making reference to that incident I just talked about. In bewildering circumstances, he said, to say the least, it was my belief that the party would use the opposition period to re-strategize with the aim of taking back power at the earliest opportunity. He says, quote, however, the present situation in the party does not inspire confidence that the party is ready to regain power. In 2023, he says, against the mood of the nation and in complete disregard for the provisions of the party's constitution, the party through the zoning of the presidency open, which created a situation that led to the emergence of a northerner as the party's presidential flag bearer, thus making the two topmost positions in the party after your emergence as a national chairman to be occupied by northerners contrary to section 7.3c of the party's constitution. Now, Orube continued his letter by saying, I salute and commend the governor of River State, His Excellency Yenson Wike, for his efforts and gallantry at the primaries. Posterity will be kind to him when the history of the party is written. Uh, there are lots to be said, but out of respect for the party, I leave some stories untold at this time. My belief in the sanctity of Nigeria is unshaken, and I'll continually work for her progress and involvement, even though it's through uh, another route, is what Orobe uh, said. Now, um, you know, the jury has been out as to the implications of this uh, particular development for the fortunes of 
uh, the People's Democratic Party as far as the 2023 elections is concerned. And you know, people are asking, will this, uh, um, will this affect the PDP in a negative way? Um, is this the feeling of uh, just Oribe, or do we have other members uh, of uh, uh, the People's Democratic Party who are from the southern part, uh, indeed other parts uh, of the country, um, you know, do you have them feeling this way about the developments in the party? Uh, if we go um, to the statement of Nyeso yes, Mwike, the governor of River State, uh, whom Oribe cited there, uh, Wike has um, talked about how uh, you know southern part of the country has been um, has been given a, 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 a hard deal or has been hard done by um, by the party, you know, bearing in mind the the uh, rotation you know the rotation uh, uh, policy of the party and bearing in mind the agreement you know perceived agreement by in fact it's not perceived it was actually agreed because they announced it twice at least and they signed. Um, uh, a communique, the sort of southern uh, governors in the PDP, you know, they agreed to the ceding of the part to the southern part of the country. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't happen. So Wiki has been calling those who, those governors who supported the uh, emergence of Atiku Abubakar, uh, who are from the southern part of the country, traitors, you know, to the south. But, well, this is what we have as a political situation in the country. Uh, the principle of zoning is very, very important. Uh, to make sure there's a balance, you know, in everything. We'll keep watching this, but the implications for the PDP going forward, you know, will we see more uh, departures from the party? Uh, where is Urubebe going to? I mean, is he joining the All Progressives Congress? Are questions uh, to be asked? Is he retiring from politics altogether? Well, time will tell. Let's move on. Um, <laughs> it's been some time um, since we heard from uh, the man who likes to say, uh huh, uh huh. You know, when he preaches, uh, talking about a former Nigerian pop musician turned uh, currently pastor, uh, of course. Uh, he's also a politician. He wears at least three hearts. He's uh, hats, rather. He's also an author, written some fantastic uh, books that you should want to read. Um, if you read those books, you know, your, vocab your vocabulary will never remain the same. I'm talking about the former presidential candidate of Fresh Party. <laughs> Do you remember the Fresh Party? You know, um, people have been talking about, uh, uh, you know, the likes of, um, you know, men of God who have been in recent times, you know, trying to be president, seeing God uh, said they should be president. And uh, the, the, so how eloquent they've been sounding and saying, um, they have no do rich retreating priest Chris Okoti do. That's what they've been saying. But anyway, uh, uh, Reverend Chris Okoti has been out of the political spotlight for some time. And uh, the founder of the Household of God Church is back in the spotlight and is back with a bang. He hasn't failed to disappoint. All right, he hasn't failed to disappoint in uh, this particular uh, episode. And he has said that the candidates of um, the leading political parties uh, in the country should step aside for him, is what he's saying. The candidates of the leading political parties in the country should step aside for him uh, to to become the president of Nigeria. He's to calling the likes of uh, Atiku Abubakar, the likes of Abola Metinbu, to step aside for him so that he, uh, Reverend Chris Okoti, can succeed President Buhari as the president uh, of Nigeria. I mean, Chris Okoti is not unknown uh, to controversy, and this is the latest. I mean, I'm sure people have been wondering uh, where the Reverend has been all this while. I mean, he's thrilled in, 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 in elections past, uh, you know. He's thrilled in elections past. He's uh, been able to, uh, 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 you know, gather attention or garner attention as, as the case may be with his eloquence, you know, with his ideas, uh, with his postulation and controversial uh, statement. And indeed, this one is no different coming from Reverend Chris Okoti. Um, so what he's saying is step aside. It's my turn uh, to rule Nigeria. I'm the one who is meant to be uh, in, in the president of the country. Um, very, very interesting one indeed. I, sh I should take over from President Muhammad Buhari. Uh, the Reverend also urged President Buhari to hand over to him as interim president in 2023. Uh, he said that he 
is the right person to right the wrongs in the country. So basically, President Barack should call him uh, and say, hey, Reverend, come and be the president. I want to hand over the keys to Asa Rock. Uh, uh, I'll cancel the elections because, I mean, if you look at the list of, of presidential candidates of the various political parties, Reverend Chris Okoti's name uh, uh, is not there. All right? Now, he made this call on Sunday while addressing journalists at his church in Oregon with Keja uh, during the 63rd, his 63rd uh, birthday celebration. It's good to see that he's waxing strong uh, in the ministry. Now, he explained the rationale behind his request, uh, noting that he proposed to become the interim president because that was the solution for the country's challenges. According to him, Nigeria is a blessed nation, uh, uh, and uh, as such, a nation has all human and natural resources uh, as the country is not moving forward. He said through his government, everything will be all right. He mentioned Ashwaji Bola Tinubu. He says, I want to implore him to support my government for the betterment of the country. He mentioned um, Peter Obi. He said that, uh, I want to tell Peter Obi that the system that introduced him, that's Peter Obi, cannot take him anywhere because he cannot operate in the system we have now. He also, you know, so this is what he said. Um, interesting times. I think he stopped short of saying that uh, God had told him he'll be the next president. Because, I mean, we would have asked, okay, so between uh, uh, Tunde Bakare and him, who did God actually, uh, which of the men of God did, uh, did, did hear from God? You know, because God cannot, may not be, cannot tell two people, you know, different things. At the same time, you'll be president, you'll be president. So which, who are we hearing from? Who uh, is truly hearing from God? But he didn't say God had told him. He said his government is the right government to fix things in Nigeria. Um, I mean, some have made some fun, you know, of the situation, saying, uh, uh, imagine a, a Reverend Chris Okoti, a presidency, who have to be listening to um, his speeches as president with a pen, a paper, and a diary, so we can understand what it is he is saying. All right, let's, let's move on from that. Um, uh, the, the, the aviation sector has been experiencing some turmoil uh, in recent times, and um, the aviation workers, uh, airport staff rather, uh, uh, are on strike over unpaid pay. Now, a, a video surfaced recently that shows um, uh, airport staff, you know, in protest at unpaid salaries, uh, seizing a passenger's luggage. All right, this is uh, kind of is quite bizarre. You know, if many have said it's quite bizarre. All right, so this caused some commotion. This was at the Murtala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos, where airport staff uh, took that action by seizing passengers' luggage uh, in protest at unpaid salaries. And this is a, a bizarre way to protest, I mean, because the passengers were not, are not the ones owing <laughs> the airport staff. Now, passengers who witnessed the protest, protest said the airport staff complained that they haven't been paid for six months, is what they're saying. They haven't been paid for six months. Um, in a video shared online, the passengers can be seen uh, standing around the baggage to reclaim or the baggage reclaim area at 7 a.m. asking for their luggage, but airport staff staff asked them to step back. Uh, one passenger added that they were told anyone who films the incident will not get their luggage. You know what they say: uh, <laughs> desperate times call for desperate measures, and that may be what, as you can see on the screen there, that is a, a sort of a snapshot. Uh, of what exactly uh, transpired at the airport. And uh, of course, like we said, it's been described as a bizarre incident, a bizarre one, uh, uh, you know, where the airport staff will refuse to give uh, uh, the luggage of, of, of passengers to them. Well, like I said, probably the, the staff are saying to themselves, I have had a meeting, a staff meeting, and said, man, desperate times call for desperate measures. We need to do something quickly to bring attention to a situation and to salvage our lives. I mean, what are they going to do in the country where right now there are few queues in Lagos and Abuja, you know, and I'm sure if you're not careful, other major cities as well, um, they need to get their salaries. Keeping owing staff for six months, you know, two months, as the case may be, is not what we need to see at this time uh, because of the situation in the country. Are we going to see other staff of other companies also uh, embarking on bizarre actions in a bid to ensure that they are paid? Uh, I don't know.
but only time will tell. But this is a situation we find ourselves in at the moment. And of course, um, we'll keep monitoring that as well. We'll bring you more as the story unfolds. Finally, uh, news broke online that the Anambra State Government uh, has launched an app or had launched an application, a mobile application uh, called Inche App. Inche App, where people uh, can lay complaints about things happening in their neighborhoods and also for vehicle registration checks, you know, for commercial uh, vehicles. Of course, this is a, a new development under the administration of Chikuma Charles Solido, who is the governor of uh, Anambra State. And it's quite interesting to see uh, something that some would describe as a novel uh, development as far as governance in Nigeria is concerned. And indeed, technology these days is uh, an easy way to scale. You know, so if you want to provide uh, uh, you know, uh, security, you want to provide uh, um, any other service, I mean, you can do that through uh, technology. So that's quite interesting. Um, you know, different groups have been commending and commenting on this. In a number of seats, it's received favorably from what we can see uh, the reactions being. It calls, it's called the 21st Century Digital Vigilante uh, Volunteering Platform for Decent and Patriotic Citizens. So I think that gives an indication of how, um, how this app will work. You know, uh, groups like the Anambra Youth Volunteer Group, you know, have uh, commended the launch of this, or rather, uh, groups have commended the Anambra Youth Volunteer uh, uh, for coming out with this app to support the security efforts of uh, insecurity in the state. Um, the leader of the group announced the development during the launch of that uh, application. So let's see how it how it goes uh, in an umbrella state, um, and if indeed you know this is going to bring the security situation there into question. All right, I need to make a correction. Uh, it was the Anambra Youth Volunteer Group that launched the app and called on the governor to take a look at it. You know, they called on the governor to take a look at, look at it and probably partner with them is what he's saying. Um, so let's see how it goes. They are saying that communities across Anambra State have come under attack in recent times and we're well aware of this. And it's a way to support the efforts to tackle insecurity in the state. Now, all efforts need to be on, on board to ensure that uh, insecurity is nipped in the bud in the southeast and across Nigeria. Let's see what happens um, with this particular mobile application. We'll be back to talk about the uh, fear queues resurfacing in Lagos State. I mean, those in Abuja have been eating a slice of this pie for some weeks now. Um, the question is, uh, it's your turn to eat this pie as well. What is going on? Why are the fear queues back? And um, we seek to understand the situation uh, as we speak with our guests. When we come back from this break, we'll begin with a look at the papers and what they have to say. Please stay with us.